keto doesn't work for me, no matter how much I try. Have you ever had that thought? Watching people doing a ketogenic lifestyle, they're losing weight, you're not, you're still inflamed, you're feeling like a failure. What's happening there? There are some ideas that are at play stopping you from losing weight that we're gonna talk about today. Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Healthy Moments of Violet. I make these videos so that we can understand that our physical health and mental health come together to create that overall sense of well-being. If you find this kind of information helpful and want to live a better life, subscribe because I make new videos every week. Today I'm going to talk about four limiting beliefs that keep us overweight and stop us from being able to benefit from a ketogenic lifestyle. The first one is, I can't do keto forever. Keto is too hard. That limiting belief comes from our history with dieting because we've, most of us, tried to diet before and we live this diet that's insane where we're not able to eat normal foods. And then once we've lost the weight, sometimes before we've even lost the weight, we go back to eating our normal life. And of course we regain the weight. The idea that I can't eat my favorite foods makes dieting a very difficult thing for the average person to do because it means I need to give up, give up flavors, give up fun. Traditionally, weight loss is very difficult to do because we're trying to fight against our body's natural mechanism, which is first and foremost to keep us alive. We want to eat fun foods, which includes a bunch of toxins, sugar and alcohol, and our body wants to keep us alive, which means getting rid of sugar and alcohol. This fight that we live with our body repeatedly causes us to feel like a failure because we will not win. Our body will keep us alive even if it means that it has to add 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds to us. Now, because I want to be successful at losing weight, I try to put myself in the best possible position to lose the weight. So I tell myself that I'm going to do the thing that's easier so that I will be able to stick to the diet. Now, the problem with that is I'm looking for a quick fix. I'm looking for the easy way to remove body fat and this leads us down this rabbit hole of fad diets. This leads us down this rabbit hole of restrictions for a short period of time that yes, in some cases will lead to weight loss, but it's not sustainable. The reason that the average person isn't actually losing weight on a ketogenic lifestyle is because what you're actually doing is half doing keto some version of half doing keto where you do keto for a period of time, but then you go off keto or you say you're doing keto, but you're not weighing your food. You're not measuring what you're eating. You're not actually checking to see that you're doing keto numbers. So I'm radically restricting myself because I'm no longer doing 350 grams of carbs a day, but I'm still not doing keto numbers. So I'm not actually doing a low enough carb scenario to lose the weight. Remember, the majority of us who come to this way of eating have lived so much damage that sometimes we even have to be doing less than 20 grams, like 10 grams, like five grams to kickstart our body into the right place. If I'm doing a hundred, if I'm doing 200 as it's amazing that I'm not doing 350 anymore, but I'm still not doing a low enough number for my body to get into fat burning. There's a reason that the doctors tell us to aim at 20 grams of carbs per day total. That's the number that the majority of people will get into ketosis. Getting into ketosis is key because you want to tap into the fat that's stored on your body rather than the energy that you're bringing in from outside. This adds to the next piece of the puzzle, which says that if I take my grams of carbs down from 350 to 20, my body will be looking for another energy source. And that's where the fat on me comes into play. However, if I take my grams of carbs down from 350 to 100, 100 is still too much. So even though I will be very hungry because I'm not eating the same amount of energy and my body does need energy, 100 means I still need to store that energy. So too many carbohydrates will still get stored. Now I'm hungry. What usually ends up happening is I will eat again. Now, if I'm eating 100 grams of carbs at every meal, even if they're better quality because I'm eating more vegetables, I'm still overeating my carbs. I still will not lose the weight. It's so important for us to understand that when we take our grams of carbs down to 20, initially at the very beginning, we need to allow ourselves to eat a little bit more fat. So 
I'm actually eating enough fat to fuel my day in the beginning, the first few days, so that my body can get used to using fat for fuel. I have the fat on board to fuel my body. But once I get myself to that place where my body is saying, oh, we're not fueling with carbs anymore, we're fueling with fat, then my body can start to look at me as a source of energy. Why? It's not shuttling carbs away into my fat storage any longer because, so when I stop poisoning myself, my body can go and tap the fat storage that I have on board. Now, this is a really important piece of the puzzle to understand because yes, initially I do encourage people to eat a little bit more fat. Unfortunately, if we then, once we are fat adapted, continue to add fat to everything, so wrapping everything in bacon, pouring olive oil on everything, adding extra fat to what I'm eating all the time means that my body has zero need to tap into the fat that I'm carrying because I'm eating enough fat to fuel the day. Think of it like this. If you have a car that's running on gas and you fill up the gas tank, is there any need to have you know, containers of gas in the trunk? Well, actually having containers of gas in the trunk makes the car less efficient because those heavy containers of gas will cause the car to actually burn more energy, which of course then you'll have to put that gas in the car rather than just using what's in the gas tank to do your travels and then refilling the gas tank when you need to. What we need to start to understand is that when we eat to satiation, then our body will use the energy that's on board. And if I do that every day, I don't have to add extra energy because there's energy on board. When I get to the point where my body feels like, okay, we don't want to go too deep into the reserves because then you won't have any reserves. That's when I will know if I need to add more fat to my day. The other limiting belief that we have is that I have to eat like violet, for example. This idea that there is a specific regimen of foods, that if I follow that specific regimen of foods, I'm gonna automatically lose weight. There's multiple problems with this. First of all, Violet has her own medical whatevers that might be different than your medical whatever. So if you start eating like me, you're not gonna do well. For example, I keep the iron intake very low because Violet has thalassemia. For all you people who do not have thalassemia, if you would eat the small amounts of iron that I have, you'd be iron deficient. It's not a great idea for you to try to eat like me. What you need to do is find the foods that you love and cook them in a way that you love. Because the other thing that you're going to see is that maybe you try to eat like me, but the flavors that Violet loves, you can't stand. Again, if I don't like what I'm eating, the chance that I'm actually going to follow through with this diet, and I say diet and I mean lifestyle, that I'm going to eat this way forever absolutely diminishes. Why? Because if I don't like what I'm eating, I'm not going to commit to eating it forever. I'm only going to commit to eating it for the short period of time it takes me to get to the goal. So I'm going to suffer through this horrible food to get to the goal that I've set for myself. And as soon as I get there, what's going to happen? Well, I hate this food, so I'm going to stop eating it. Okay, what am I gonna eat now? Unfortunately, the chance that you go back to a standard American diet, standard Canadian diet, and regain the weight, and then after you regain the weight, the chance that you'll go past the original weight is super high, because yo-yo dieting results in us ending at a higher weight than where we started. What's even more important than the taste of the food is why I'm eating what I'm eating. When you try to eat like me, you're not actually allowing yourself to understand why Violet eats the way she does. Versus if you start to understand what is the purpose of food, then what you're going to start to realize is that I eat food to fuel my body. Okay, when I'm trying to fuel my body, what are the fuel sources that are safe for me? Ah, that's when you start to realize that a carbohydrate running system creates more damage to the body than a fat running system. As a matter of fact, a fat running system creates hardly any problems because we need that fat to build our body. We need that fat for fuel versus carbohydrates. The amount of carb we actually need to run in the body, our body can actually make it. The other reason to eat food is to build the body. Our body does not need carbohydrates as a building block to build us. Our body uses carbohydrates as an energy source for the specific parts of our body that needs that energy. Building of the body is protein and fat. So again, the benefits to eating protein and fat are there, 
Whereas the benefits of eating carbohydrates, less, because our body makes all that we need. Understanding the point of food really helps us to change what we're doing. Because when I understand that I eat food to build and repair and to fuel my body, then the fun factor of food is clearly less important than the value, so the quality of the food I'm eating. But yet, on a very regular basis, I know at least this was my story, that I was eating foods because they tasted fun, because they were fun, and not eating foods to fuel the body that I wanted five years, seven years, 10 years from now. Chicken pot pie tastes good. Spaghetti tastes good. French fries taste good. But was that creating the body that was gonna help Violet to live a happy life 10, 15, 20 years from now? No, right? It was just tasting good in this moment, creating inflammation, creating um, degeneration of internal organs. It was damaging me. I just didn't know that. Today, now that you know what's the purpose of food, it's going to affect how you choose what you choose. You're not necessarily gonna like what Violet likes, but you're gonna have the ability to look at some foods and say, is that a healthy source of whatever it is I'm trying to get to build the healthy body that I'm trying to build? I wanna be clear about something. You could eat potatoes, carrots, uh, bell peppers on a ketogenic lifestyle, and you can be in ketosis. Every person is going to decide how they live their ketogenic lifestyle. My major goal here is helping you to understand that everything I do, so it's a choice, will lead to different outcomes. If I choose to keep high glycemic vegetables in my diet, I will eat smaller amounts of those vegetables because I'm going to stay under 20 grams of carbs per day. And this is me assuming that you're actually gonna live a ketogenic lifestyle. Eating those smaller meals for some people is gonna be absolutely fine versus other people that eating those small meals because we come from the standard American, standard Canadian diet, standard Caribbean diet, that we expect large amounts of food on the plate is not gonna be a satisfying experience. If I don't have a satisfying experience when I'm eating my meal, what happens? I'm much more likely to overeat at some point down the road because, and it might not be right now, I might eat this meal, but then I'm not satisfied. Now I'm feeling snacky. And now I'm gonna go chasing those keto snacks. And right, and so even if I think that I'm staying within my numbers, I might not actually be staying within my numbers if I'm not tracking every one of these things and being on, on point. Second of all, if some of those foods that I'm eating are processed foods, you are trusting your health to the big corporations who do not necessarily have your best interest at heart. The third limiting belief that I hear that stops people from being able to accomplish their weight loss goals, their ketogenic healthy life goals, is this idea that I will not get to my goal weight because everybody in my family is fat. And so therefore I will automatically become fat at some point. This causes a few different problems. The first one being a wholehearted investment in doing keto is not there. Because back of my mind, I believe that this cannot work for me. So. If I think it's not gonna work for me, I'm gonna live that self-fulfilling prophecy of not allowing it to work for me because again, I will then not invest completely in doing the ketogenic lifestyle. The other problem that happens when we think this way is that we don't allow for the space that, yes, my entire family may be overweight. At the same time, very likely, my grandparents and my great-grandparents, there's a, a history of how do we cook or not cook? So are we fast fooding a lot? Or So what's the history? How do we treat food? I learned that from my family. So if my family has a poor relationship with food, if my family uses food as reward, if my family uses food as emotional comfort, if my family uses food as entertainment, I would have been taught to do that as well. If my family has an idea about food that says you have to stretch to feed everybody, even if I can afford to feed everybody the good parts of the meal, so the meat and the, 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 the high, higher quality veg, if my mentality is that I have to stretch, I'm gonna put still a lot of rice on the plate or pasta on the plate, right? I'm gonna stretch. Is that healthy for my family? Is that healthy for me? No. The way that my family is living their life does not mean that I need to keep living my life that way. I think we put too much emphasis on the genetic component of being overweight and ignore the fact that we don't eat well. 
it's known to us that we overeat carbohydrates, but yet we blame my family history. This idea that I will automatically become diabetic, blaming my family history, not the fact that I'm overeating carbohydrates right now, today. Interesting to me, the genetic component of this is that if my family has a tendency towards something and I am overeating my carbo, so if I'm poisoning myself with sugar, my family's tendency will probably show itself in me. So if I have a family of a history of PCOS, I will probably go towards PCOS. If my family has a history of eczema, I will probably go towards eczema. That's part of the story. Will the other more damaging heart disease, diabetes, liver issues, kidney issues show up at some point? Yeah, very likely. Your body can only protect you for so long. It's understanding that this family history can be interrupted by eating appropriately, right? The same way that if my family has a history of alcoholism and I recognize that in my youth and choose to allow myself to drink other things besides alcohol, the chance that Violet becomes an alcoholic is actually extremely low because she chose to drink things other than alcohol. As I pause here to realize that addiction to alcohol and addiction to carbohydrates Sometimes we try to see them as very different, but in actuality, they're not that far apart. If I'm addicted to, I will eat. If I'm addicted to, I will drink. And so whatever I happen to addicted to, if I'm addicted to cocaine, I'm gonna put it up my nose. Like whatever I happen to be addicted to, whether it's a drink, whether it's a food, whether it's a, a chemical that I'm somehow injecting or ingesting somehow. So uh, your addiction, your, your family's history of addiction can also play a role here, but again, I have the ability to intervene if I allow myself to see that that pattern actually doesn't have to be there. The fourth limiting belief that we have that causes us to fail at a ketogenic lifestyle is this idea that I have to also exercise. There's a lot of people who do keto who talk about exercise and push exercise alongside keto, which I absolutely feel is terrific. If you wanna exercise and do keto, that is amazing because you're gonna be a stronger, healthier person. My point for you to think about is that food determines your weight and your your stability of your body exercise is for strength and flexibility they're both necessary if you want to feel healthy but we need to be careful that we don't confuse them you cannot exercise away things that you are eating because the things that you are eating will absolutely impact your body and how your body behaves and if there's toxins coming into your body exercise is not going to stop that Exercise does not stop alcohol from harming you. Exercise does not stop sugar from harming you. The 70 pounds that I lost doing a ketogenic lifestyle, I lost without doing any extra exercise. And what I mean by that is the activities that I was doing when I was overweight, I continued to do. I didn't add a gym workout. I didn't add cardio or whatever. I just kept doing my normal activities. So pay attention to that because I was an active person while overweight. I'm an active person while weighing less. I have less time for my activities today than I did back then because I'm doing YouTube now. So the exercise was not what helped me to lose the weight. This idea that we have to exercise and I hate exercise and so therefore because I hate exercise, I can't be successful at keto, that's a fallacy. Eat correctly, your body will regulate your weight. Exercise and your body will be stronger and more flexible. If you really wanna add exercise to your life because you think that you want to be stronger, you want to be more flexible, choose activities that you love to do. Find a sport, find an act, go for walks, like do things that you actually like and you will improve your health, flexibility and strength. It doesn't have to be a gym workout, right? I hate going to the gym. That's why I snowboard. That's why I longboard. That's why I'm learning to skateboard. That's why I play badminton. That's what, like, I have a bunch of activities. I rollerblade, I bicycle. I have a bunch of activities that I love to do because I hate pushing weights around, even though I have a gym in my basement, right? I'd rather be outside. Find the thing that's gonna work for you. To learn more about how you can do keto appropriately and solve your metabolic issues, get to your appropriate weight, tap the screen right there because these videos are going to help you to improve your health, both physical and mental. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. Can't wait to talk to you guys again next week.